festival of lights comes knocking on your door once again and it's time to celebrate be happy eat loads of good food and on this auspicious occasion i'm going to treat you guys to some melt in the mouth kalakand i'm going to start with heating 1 liter of full fat milk You have to boil this milk till it reduces to half quantity and that will take a while so around 10 minutes The milk is reduced to half now and I'm going to use a pinch of alum powder to get a nice granule texture so just a pinch and keep stirring start seeing these small granules that are happening make sure you keep scraping the edges after cooking it for 2 minutes i'm going to add some grated paneer After adding the paneer, cook it for a minute, and then I'm going to add sugar, around eight tablespoons of sugar. The sugar is going to melt and ooze out a little bit of water, so make sure you cook it through till the water evaporates. The water is nicely evaporated and now I'm going to turn off the flame and add some cardamom powder. Stir it in. And this kalakand is ready to set. You can take a grease tray and spread the kalakand in it and let it set for at least 2 hours and then cut the pieces and serve. But what I'm going to do is I have these beautiful small bowls in that I'm going to set them so that it looks cute while presenting it. Instead of cutting pieces, just serve a single bowl to a guest and they can enjoy it. I'm going to fill it in these bowls and set them. If you don't have glass bowls you can always fill it in those disposable cups you get amazing different shapes so you can just use them Garnish with a few almond and pistachio flakes and let them set for 2 hours With this I wish you a very happy Diwali and may your lives be filled with a lot of sweetness warmth and joy Sweets is an integral part of Indian cuisine Karanji is one such easy and interesting sweet to make you can call it gugra or gujia so let's just make it I'm going to start with making the dough first 3/4 cup plain flour 2 tablespoon of semolina 2 to 3 tablespoons of ghee so i'm going to add 2 and a half and i'm going to mix all these ingredients and i'm going to add water and make the dough make a soft dough the dough is ready and i'm going to cover it with a wet cloth and keep it aside for 15 20 minutes while the dough is resting i'm going to quickly make the filling desiccated coconut half a cup powdered sugar raisins 
1 tablespoon cashew nut pieces, 1 tablespoon almond pieces, half a teaspoon cardamom powder and 1 tablespoon poppy seeds. Let's mix everything properly. And the filling is ready. So let's start shaping the karanjis. I'm going to make small balls of the dough and keep them covered with a wet cloth at all times. And I'm going to take one and start rolling it. Not a very thin puri. I'm going to cut it with a ring so that I get all the karanjis of equal size. Apply a little bit of water on the edge. I'm going to take a teaspoon of the filling, keep it in the center and then stick them together. Seal it properly. And now I'm going to shape the edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press on the edge and then fold it inside and the tip that comes out, I'm going to press again and fold it. So continue doing this till you finish the entire karanji. A batch of karanjis is ready to fry. Medium hot oil. Don't be in a hurry to fry them, otherwise the outer covering is going to taste raw. On slow flame, I'm going to let them fry. Flip them over. They're nice and golden brown and I'm going to get them out. Hi guys, I'm travelling this weekend and I was thinking about which homemade snack should I carry. And the only thing that comes to my mind is chivda. So I thought about sharing it with you. So let's make it. I'm going to start with first mixing all the dry spices in a bowl. 1 teaspoon roasted fennel seed powder, half a teaspoon black salt, half a teaspoon turmeric powder, half a teaspoon salt, 1 teaspoon red chilli powder, 2 tablespoon powdered sugar. Just mix all these ingredients properly and keep it ready. Let's fry all the ingredients for chivda. I'm going to need a strainer like this to fry because otherwise you'll be hunting for everything in the oil. So I'm going to start with using rice plates. There are two kinds of rice plates. One is the uh, thin ones and the other ones are the thick ones. So I'm going to use the thicker ones. I'm just going to put a little bit in the strainer. A nice medium hot oil. Don't let it change colour. Strain out all the oil and remove it in a bowl lined with tissue paper. After you fry every ingredient, sprinkle a little bit of the mixed masala and coat it well. Since it's hot, it's going to coat properly. Next, I'm going to fry half a cup of ground nuts. Certain things take longer to fry, certain things fry instantly. So accordingly, you will have to adjust the time. Fry the ground nuts till it changes colour. And the ground nuts are ready. Strain out all the oil and mix it in the chivra. Sprinkle a little bit of the spices and mix it. Fry all the dry ingredients first. This is two tablespoons of cashew nuts and they'll fry very quickly. Let's get them out. A little bit of the spices on it. Few curry leaves. Just flash fry them. And now I'm going to start frying the Soak for 4 hours. The gram dal takes a little time to fry. Once the gram dal makes a crackling noise like this, it's ready. This takes the maximum time to fry. A little bit of the spice mix. And now half a cup of soaked moon for 4 hours. This also is going to take some time to fry. Once the moong also starts making a crackling sound like that, that means it's ready. Make sure you pat dry the soaked ingredients like gram dal and moong before you fry them. Some spice mix and I'm going to mix everything together. If you want, you can also add some ready-made save in this chivra. I'm going to get rid of the tissue paper. Mix everything well. 
just taste it and see if you need to add any other spices. You might not need to add the entire mix of the masala. And the chivda is ready. You can add many more ingredients like save. I have something called dried cornflakes over here, which is easily available in grocery stores, which you can fry. You can even add shavings of dry coconut. So you can make your own variation of this chivda. Whenever someone asks me what's my favorite tea time snack, I don't waste any time in answering shakar para. The crispiness and the taste is so wonderful and my mom has a very easy recipe and I'm going to share it with you all. Let's begin with making the sugar syrup for the dough. One cup sugar, one cup water. I'm going to put this to boil. Just keep stirring. Once the sugar crystals dissolve, I'm going to add half a cup of ghee or clarified butter. Let this syrup boil on slow flame for 2 to 3 minutes. It's time to get this off the flame. And I'm going to cool it down. This sugar syrup has cooled down and now it's time to add the flour. There's no specific measurement to add the flour. It's just approximately enough to make a nice soft dough. I'm going to add just a small pinch of salt, not too much. I'm going to add the flour. Don't add a lot of it at once, just keep mixing it and keep adding. Mix this well. Now you can see everything is coming together. The dough is ready. I've approximately added three to three and a half cups of flour, but you'll still have to check to get a nice soft consistency. Don't add all of it together. Don't keep the dough aside. Just start rolling it immediately. So I've taken a small ball of the dough and I'm going to roll it. Don't use any dry flour while rolling it. If it's still sticking to the board, apply a little bit of ghee and roll it. I've rolled the roti around 2 mm thick and now I'm going to cut it. I'm going to use a pizza cutter and I'm going to cut them into small pieces but I'm just going to cut off the edges. Cut it into small squares or even diamonds if you like. The oil is nice and hot and now I'm going to fry them. Add as many as they fit. Reduce the flame once all of them go in. Fry them till you get a nice golden brown color. Keep flipping them. Let's get them out. My mom used to make these shakar paras with leftover sugar syrup from any of the sweets like gulab jamun etc. So that's another shortcut way of making it. These shakar paras take good for at least 7-8 days in an airtight container, so you can munch on them whenever you want. Hi, welcome to Beat Batter Bake with me Priyanka. Diwali is here and it's time to make some Indian desserts. As I mentioned before, making desserts at home is my responsibility. So today we are going to make this rich, delicious, classic Mawa cake. So for this we require 80 grams of regular flour and I am going to add half teaspoon of baking powder, 1 4 teaspoon of baking soda, give it a stir. Next we move to our wet ingredients. Here we need 100 grams of condensed milk. To this I am going to add 80 ml of melted butter and give it a stir. Alright, now we add 50 ml of milk. And 
and just whisk it. Now it's time to mix our dry ingredients with our wet ingredients. Next we're gonna add half cup khoya. So basically I have just grated it and you get it like this, a little crumbled one. I'm gonna add this. I'm just going to fold it in. And to add that little festive flavor, I'm going to add a pinch of cardamom powder. Mm. If you like more, well, you can add more. done with our mixing it's time to spoon them in individual molds I'm using these small individual oval molds which I have lightly buttered Now this will go for baking at 175 degrees celsius for 25 minutes. While the cake is getting baked, we are going to make a simple milk syrup. For this I have used half cup of regular milk and I am going to put it for a little boil. I have here 1 tablespoon of regular sugar. I am going to get it to a gentle boil till the sugar melts. Now I am going to pour a little of this milk in another bowl. I have some kesar which is saffron strands in this bowl. Now I am just going to mix it a little till it gives a nice yellow color and beautiful fragrance. And I am going to add it back to the milk. And look at the way it changes its color. Now let this boil for another 5 minutes. And our cakes are ready! Okay, it's quite hot. And I'm gonna wait for another 10 minutes for it to cool down a bit. So our cakes have cooled down and it's time to demold. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to poke it a little. Now I'm going to pour the milk and saffron syrup on top of it. Wow. All right. And I'm going to add badam and some pistachio. Then our mawa cake is ready. Don't you want to make it? Well, you have to make it this Diwali. Well, if you do like the video, do hit like, mention in the comments below and subscribe to the channel. Last but not the least, Happy Diwali! Diwali is all about lights, lamps, treats and gifts. 
For me, Diwali is also about making besan laddus. My grandmother is known to make the best besan laddus in the family, and on this special occasion, I am going to share with you her recipe for making this sweet delight. To begin with, you need to put in one cup or 220 grams of pure ghee. And once the ghee melts, I'm going to turn down the heat and put in about two cups or 250 grams of besan or chickpea flour. And this needs to be stirred continuously on low heat, or else the flour will get burnt. Initially, the ghee absorbs all the flour, and later on, bubbles begin to appear on the surface. And after a few minutes. The mixture assumes a somewhat liquid consistency. My grandmother says to make great besan laddus, you need to get the proportion of ingredients right, and the flour has to be roasted properly. If you under roast the flour, then your laddus will be light in color and have very little flavor. And if you over roast the flour, then you run the risk of burning it. It's been about 20 to 25 minutes. I've been stirring this all the while. It's time to put in some extra flour into this mixture. In goes about two third cup of besan flour. The mixture is a bit thick now, but it will loosen up after a while. I'm going to stir this for about eight to ten minutes more. The besan is now nicely roasted, and I can't tell you how wonderful my kitchen is smelling right now. And at this point, I'm going to turn off the heat, and then put in about eight to ten cashews that have been chopped into pieces. I'm also going to stir in two tablespoons of raisins. The cashews and the raisins will get roasted in the heat. I'm going to allow this to cool down. Completely. This mixture is completely cool, and after this cools down, you need to stir in some cardamom powder made from the seeds of eight cardamom pods. And then I'm going to put in some powdered sugar. I have about two cups of powdered sugar, 280 grams. I'm going to mix this all up together. I think this is better done with my hands. If you find that the mixture is a little loose, you can add in a little more sugar. But I think this is just right for the mixture I have over here. The mixture is now nicely mixed, and now is the time to roll this mixture into laddus. Making besan laddus is always a surreal experience for me. The magical aroma that fills my home while making these laddus, the divine taste of these laddus, and the joy of sharing them with my near and dear ones gives a lot of contentment to my heart. And Arun Festival is supposed to do just that. I would like to take your leave by wishing you all a very happy Diwali. May your lives be filled with light, love, peace, and joy.